So you're thinking about picking up an AMD Ryzen 5 processor, but you can't decide between the Ryzen 5 3600X and Ryzen 5 3600. Well, you've come to the right place. First of all, I want to commend you on whittling it down to these two fantastic chips. Bravo. I wouldn't have done it any differently myself. I really wouldn't. These two processors are both number one and number two on our list of the best CPUs for gaming because they so impressed yours truly with their affordable gaming chops. So let's take a look at which one of these mainstream buys is best. Both chips are built upon the 7 nanometer process node from TSMC, which AMD has chosen to lay the foundation of its Zen 2 architecture. This architecture is the follow-up to Zen, first launched in 2016, and has taken a starring role in AMD's return to form ever since. The architecture brings in some pivotal changes to the fore, resulting in a massive 15% IPC increase generation to generation. That means that AMD has managed to close the gap considerably on Intel's gaming lead, and on equivalent value alone, overcome it. You can hear more about the Zen 2 architecture and its competitiveness against Intel's Coffee Lake architecture in our Who's Faster vid, but for today we're going to focus purely on the delicate issue of deciding which chip is best for you. To do that, we need to break down the differences between these two chips, because realistically, there aren't that many. When it comes to hard and fast differences between the silicon on these two Ryzen 5 gaming CPUs, it essentially comes down to clock speed alone. Both feature 6 cores and 12 threads of Zen 2 processing power, but while the Ryzen 5 3600 will boost its handful of cores from 3.6GHz up to 4.2GHz, the Ryzen 5 3600X manages 3.8GHz with a boost clock set at 4.4GHz. The only other disparity is the rated TDP. The AMD Ryzen 3600 features a 65W TDP, while the Ryzen 5 3600X requires a slightly more capable thermal solution at 95 watts. hence why the former comes packed with the Wraith Stealth Cooler and the latter the Wraith Spire. So really when we're talking about the Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 5 3600X, we're actually talking about 200MHz, 2cm of heatsink and another $50. Now we're getting into the heart of the matter, and it all comes down to performance. But how much further will that 200 megahertz get you in game? The answer to that, not much. In Total War Three Kingdoms, the 3600X and the 3600 score exactly the same at 122 FPS. While in Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1440p, which is slightly less CPU intensive, the Ryzen 5 3600X gets 1 FPS higher than the 3600. In Metro Exodus at 1080p, they both score exactly the same yet again, although the minimum frame rate on the 3600X is just 1 FPS higher. In F1, we're talking a 1 FPS difference again with slightly higher minimums on the 3600X. In synthetic benchmarks, we are seeing a slight difference, however, with the 3600X and its extra 200MHz clock speed managing to just about edge the 3600. And the same can be said in Cinebench R20. And when we get to X264 version 5, the 3600X is just slightly ahead of the 3600 yet again. The benefit of the Ryzen 5 3600X over the 3600 is minimal at best across our gaming benchmark suite. The Ryzen 5 3600 is equally capable as its bigger sibling across Far Cry New Dawn and Total War 3 Kingdoms, and within a frame or two in Assassin's Creed Origins, Metro Exodus and F1 2019. We see a performance gap appear slightly between the 3600 and 3600X in synthetic benchmarks however, so maybe the 200MHz clock speed bonus isn't entirely wasted. Nevertheless, the fact of the matter is, we're not seeing a tangible benefit in the real world. Seeing as the Wraith Spire is essentially just a Wraith Stealth with high heels on, this one's a given. The Wraith Spire is the better cooler simply because its heatsink offers a larger surface area more able to absorb and dissipate all the heat your CPU is spitting out. But that's not entirely the end of the story. The Wraith Spire, while not responsible for the entire $50 price increase over the 3600, is responsible for some amount of it. We can fight over the exact economics of a 200MHz clock speed increase later. Therefore, it's all about weighing up the slightly chunkier cooler is truly worth it over the lesser model. 
We tested both coolers across both chips at idle and during a lengthy X264 V5 benchmark run. This should give us a strong idea of what temperatures these CPUs will reach over a lengthy gaming session. For the record, this was carried out on an MSI X570 ACE motherboard with the default fan curve in place. We also removed and replaced the included thermal grease with a standard dose of Arctix MX4. Since you'll almost only ever own the Wraith Spire if you bought the Ryzen 5 3600X, and likewise the Wraith Stealth if you bought the 3600, there's almost no point comparing these coolers laterally. But for a couple extra centimeters of heatsink, we see only a slight decline in temperatures. What is important, however, is that neither the Wraith Spire or less capable Wraith Stealth allowed the CPU under heavy and constant load for roughly 15 minutes go above 83 degrees Celsius. And that's on the least suited and least likely CPU cooler combo of the lot. And despite both chips max T-junction temperature being set to 95 degrees Celsius. With ostensibly little to be gained by either and both surprisingly capable coolers, the difference between these two across their respective CPUs becomes largely unimportant. So which is the better buy out of the Ryzen 5 3600X and the Ryzen 5 3600? Well, we side with the latter, the Ryzen 5 3600. It's not that the 3600X isn't worth its salt, it is. The chip is undoubtedly a convincing upgrade over previous generation chips and the competition's fair and capable both multi-threaded everyday workloads, a modicum of content creation and, crucially, fantastic gaming performance. But when considering the Ryzen 3000 stack as a whole, the Ryzen 5 3600X loses its vigor. If you have exactly $249 to spend on your gaming PC's brain, then there's a good chance this chip appeals to your sensibilities, the fantastic stock cooler being the icing on the cake. However, there's an overwhelming case to be made instead for the 3600 with the Wraith Stealth. Sure, both perform marginally worse overall compared to the 3600X, yet with an extra $50 in hand to be invested in a more powerful GPU perhaps, an identically priced Ryzen 5 3600 build could actually outperform one built around the X series chip. That $50 could be the difference between the Nvidia GTX 1660 and the 1660 Ti, which is a tangible upgrade you really will notice in game. And what you may have noticed in our performance graphs was the Ryzen 5 2600X. Sure, this chip isn't Zen 2 or 7 nanometer, but it is a downright bargain right now. Stock may not last for long, but if you want solid performance for cheap, the 2600X is the absolute way to go. But that doesn't change our conclusion, and the Ryzen 3600 is our top pick for mainstream gaming. We hope that helps you make a decision on your next gaming CPU, and if you need a hand building your new AMD powered PC, then you can find lots of useful guides on the PC Games N YouTube channel to help you on your way. While you're there, give us a like, subscribe, check out PCGamesN.com for even more from me and the rest of the lovely lot here, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.